Hello everybody, my name is Katie Smith and today I am here with JT Lawson. He is the owner of the Make Your Dog Epic franchise locations here in Oklahoma. And JT, do we train dogs to walk on a leash? We do train dogs to walk on a leash. So a lot of people, they get their dog because they want them to be their best friend. They want to be able to go on walks, they want to go on adventures, they want to go hiking to the RV park, a bunch of different stuff. But now the dog channels their inner sled dog and now they're pulling him through the, the streets and the parks and wherever and now they're not fun to take on a walk anymore because now it's like a workout and a walk and so it's not fun um, or their dogs like barking at other dogs or other kids or squirrels or cats or ducks or whatever it is and so we train dogs absolutely to walk on a leash and we do it one of two ways either we teach heel which is where they're perfectly lined up and there's no pulling at all um, and their shoulders lined up with our leg or we teach loose leash walking, which is basically where the dog can be wherever they want, but there's no pulling. And it just depends on how advanced people want it. So most people don't really care about heel. they just like, dude, I just need my dog to stop pulling me everywhere. And so if that's your goal, we just teach loose leash walking, but we absolutely do train that. Well, that sounds wonderful, JT. So what would be the next steps to opening a franchise location? So if you want to open a Make Your Dog Epic franchise, you go to makeyourdogepic.com, you fill out the form, our team's going to call you as soon as possible. We're going to answer any questions you have. We're going to get you all the information you need, and we'll walk you through the next steps, and we'll lead you to success. Sounds easy. Thank you, JT. I'm Teresa, and this is my dog, Rex. You wouldn't know it, but a few weeks ago, he would never have been sitting here like this. I found Make Your Dog Epic because my friend had sent her dog to them, and it was amazing the difference that that training made with her dog. I'm Timothy Simone. I'm Tia Renzel. We're from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I heard about Make Your Dog Epic via uh, Google. Google reviewed and they had really good re reviews. Uh, Tuxedo had a hard time uh, getting in and out of the car. He also had a hard time with commands like come and place. In barking, it's been phenomenal. I highly recommend to anyone that has a dog that even if they're the worst dog or even just somewhat pretty well trained, the touch-ups and even just the amount of growth he's had during that time has been amazing. I would say don't ever, don't hesitate using them. They are great. Um, I spoke to a bunch of other companies and I was sold right away from Sean all the way down to JT coming to our house. I highly recommend them. Hi, my name's Chloe and this is Louie. Um, I'm from Syracuse. And we are just so grateful for Make Your Dog Epic. They were so amazing with us. I would describe the training as very personalized. Um, from the time that we had our first assessment, they were able to um, figure out what Louie needed and all of the lessons were very personalized to his personal needs. He's doing so much better. Um, and now everyone else can enjoy the happy dog that I have. So, so grateful for them and I would definitely recommend it to anyone. This is Nathan and Kendra Manwaring in Morgan, Utah. And this is Sky. And we had an amazing training experience. I think they did a great job with her. We would definitely recommend uh, Make Your Dog Epic to anybody. Um, every time that people come over and they ask, they, they say, wow, we probably should have done that. And I said, well, you still can. Yeah, Tyler and his crew there are great. And if when we ever get another dog, we'll be using you guys again. My name is Sarah Jones. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. With Rags being a kind of corso, the biggest struggle was him pulling on a leash when we took him for a walk, him <laughs> listening the first time. That was the biggest, the biggest problems that we had. Awesome. Strong dog. I wouldn't trust anyone else besides Make Your Dog Epic with your dog. They Perfect. are excellent. They are friendly. They love dogs. They love what they do. And Rags is great. It's worth your money. Don't hesitate to take it to anyone else. Make Your Dog Epic is the only place to go. I am Kendra Payton. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, before dog training, she was doing a lot of leash pulling and uh, jumping on people because she's very over loving. Um, so this has definitely made a huge difference. Um, it's been wonderful. She's def not pulling on the leash as much and we've learned new commands as well that uh, we didn't even think about before. So. Um, it's definitely um, been a, a wonderful experience. It's life changing. Um, go ahead and schedule that first appointment and I promise you, you will not regret it. Uh, I'm Lisa and I'm from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And this is Peyton and this is Peanut. 
I did a Google search. So Peanut being only, she's about seven months old, uh, she would cry and whine constantly when she was not right by us. Uh, she would not listen at all and she was just very, very hyper. Um, she came home today and she's a completely different dog. Um, she's still herself, her loving, like she's very loving, but she, we just did a 180 here. <laughs> well, I would say that, um, you know, we, we get a dog to be able to enjoy them and to be a family pet and she's so much more enjoyable now that we're not just frustrated with her. So it's worth the investment. Um, Cindy Weyerbach, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm an aggressive, um, wouldn't come when called, he'd get out and keep, he'd keep going. Um, stealing food, it's been wonderful. It's, it's so nice that I can call him and he'll come. I'm not gonna have to worry about him biting anybody. Um, it's good that, you know, my kids will be able to eat his dinner without the dog stealing his food. It's really great. It's 100% worth it. Uh, we are Wayne and Sue Hayes from Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Uh, we went to the uh, Home and Guard show and we met TJ there and uh, uh, Akili and we're impressed and left our name for a phone call. It's been night and day. Um, Wonderful. He, he uh, does the loose leash walking. Um, he stopped um, being aggressive toward other dogs and other people so far. So he's, it's just a pleasure to go walking with him now and uh, he's uh, learning commands. He knows what off means. And, and we still um, use the use that. Um, and he knows what come means. Uh, like I say, he walks well. Um, and he's just, he's just a different dog. I would say get off the fence. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's just been a pleasure. We tried two other dog trainers who just gave up. Uh, and accomplished nothing, um, but we started seeing results uh, in the first week. Walking Tiberius was the number one problem for me. He would pull me, um, if you could picture a cartoon character flying behind their dog, that would be me. And um, he pulled my shoulder out of the socket last time I took him to the vet. So I really struggled with that. I dreaded ever taking him to the vet because of that. So now he's able to walk with me on the leash and not pull me, and that is wonderful. He wouldn't drop stuff if he got it in his mouth. He would be very resistant to putting it down. Now I can walk him and make him listen to me when I tell him not to pull. I say Make Your Dog Epic is amazing. I love the way um, our experience went with JT, you. Um, I, I feel like you're very energetic and you just make it happy. You make it feel good what we're doing. And Tiberius has come home just himself, only a better version. My name is Christian. Uh, I'm from Austin, Texas, from the TV Talk earlier this year. I found Make Your Dog Epic on Google, and their training has been fantastic. My dog is finally able to listen to me. I'm able to have a better relationship with my dog, and I would recommend um, Make your dog epic for anyone who is trying to have a tighter, more um, close -knit connection with their with their animal and their loved one. Country singers Tim McGraw and his wife Faith Hill are going to play the XL Energy Center this weekend. But before they go ahead and do that, they're going to be at a benefit on Lake Minnetonka to raise money for families of military members. It is the home. Uh, it's at the home, rather, of the owner of the Minnesota-based Snap Fitness. WCCO's Jennifer Merrily found out why he decided to open up the private show to boaters. The stage is nearly set for Grammy Award-winning singer Tim McGraw. The country crooner will play for 400 on Sunday in what's being called Liberty on the Lake. This is a Snap Fitness event, but the benefactor is Folds of Honor. And uh, Folds of Honor, um, when you boil it down, it's about paying for education of the children of families of fallen soldiers. Snap Fitness owner Peter Towton serves on the board of the nonprofit. He brought together his passion for philanthropy with a new partner in business and fellow supporter of veteran causes, Tim McGraw. The concert venue was set on Towton's lakefront estate on Palmer Point. We wanted to make sure that this event, it felt exclusive for all of our guests. 
The show will raise nearly $200,000 for scholarships. The need is huge. All of that stays in Minnesota for Minnesota families. These people have made sacrifices, and in some cases the ultimate sacrifice, and it recognizes their loved one for what they did for our country. In the spirit of raising awareness, Houghton decided to open the event up to whoever can make it on the water. So we promoted it, saying, look, come by boat. Um, we spent a lot of money putting speakers along the shoreline, so acoustically they're going to uh, experience the concert as well. We designed the stage, as you see, where Tim can very easily turn around and face the late crowd. Jennifer Merrily, WCCO 4 News. And we've heard of people who plan to park their boats tomorrow to get a good spot on the water. Now, the event is not until Sunday. It goes from 1130 until 3 o'clock with Tim McGraw on stage around 1.30. Uh, Palmer Point's near the southwest corner of Lake Minnetonka, and that'll be the place to be. We have a lot more information on Folds of Honor and the good work they do at WCCO.com slash links. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was studying business statistics, right, which was hard for me anyway and I remember closing my book and I looked at my twin brother and I said I quit and it ended up being one of the best things I ever did. Personally I didn't get the opportunity to go to college and I'm glad I didn't because you meet a friend and they're like oh so where'd you go to school you know they're kind of asking where you went I'm like oh, I went to the school of hard knocks I would rather be street smart than book smart any day and and I learned a lot the same way you did my dad with his small grocery store when I was eight years old he gave me the opportunity to sell popcorn in front of his grocery store 25 cents a bag so every Saturday you'd see me there and then at the end of the day We'd pay off the popcorn and oil, and then my dad would take half, and we would take half. I could never repay him for the education my dad gave me. It's, it's, it, 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 there was, it's so valuable. He taught me how to work. I picked up a racket when I was 13, and, and it was racquetball was a sport to me that, I, that, that came easy to me, right? So by the time I was 17, 18 years old, I was a, I was a professional. So I spent a lot of time inside the court, and at that same club was the same club that offered me a job when at the time I was living in Orlando, Florida, the club was losing money and they said, hey, Peter, if you come back and run this club for us, we'll pay you $16,000 a year, but we'll give you an opportunity to buy us out with the profits that the business generates. So for me, that was the opportunity that I needed. I had to get creative. I started bartering. So I, would, I went to the carpet um, store in town and I said, tell you what, I don't have any money, but I have memberships. How about if you give me carpet and I'll give you memberships for all your employees? And to my surprise, many of them said, okay. Slowly the membership base began to grow. And, and, and over a matter of four years, I, the business went from losing 200 grand a year to making $200,000 a year. I went right back to the bank, got another loan, built another club. Now I had two clubs paying one loan. So you know what, when you start with nothing, you're fearless. Crazy, a lot of your buddies are probably still up in St. Cloud. What St. Is, Cloud, they, they, hey Peter, let's go party, let's do this, that. Yeah. I mean, it's the typical life of a 22 year old. Right. And you know, I remember when I came into the club, I remember I had an all staff meeting and I said, hey, tomorrow we're going to clean. The next day I come to work and, and before I'm getting ready to start cleaning, there's probably 40, 50 people there. About three or four of them step, step forward, speaking on behalf of the group. And they said, hey, Peter, we just want you to know we don't clean. Mm. Okay, that's, that's not what we do. In other words, that's not in our job description. I look at them. You, you're talking about a, a, a character building moment. I take a step back. I don't know half of their names, right? I've been there all of two days. And I said and you also don't have a job. I had to do it, right? And those were, those were character building moments and I, and I filled in the voids where I had to. But I tell you what, that's how we were able to grow that membership base so fast because I said, you know, when people come in, we're gonna call them by name, this club is gonna be clean and, and we're gonna deliver on our promise, helping people get fit. I took the one club and I built it into six clubs. These are clubs with indoor pools, racquetball, aerobic studios, they were big clubs. I sold them. And what it got me to do, it got me to think about 
what if? So I said, ask myself, what if I eliminate racquetball courts? What if I eliminate aerobic studios? What if I eliminate the swimming pool Just and child care? The... All of it. So this club that was normally 40,000 square feet was suddenly three, 4,000 feet. Instead of having 50 employees, I had two, right? The unit level economics came in place. So I built one club and in 90 days, I sold enough memberships in 90 days to cash flow the business for the year. And that was that was the, the, the starting point of, of what today is known as Snap Fitness with uh, a couple thousand locations around the world and, and then multiple other brands that we've developed since then. Did I know at that time I was gonna, I was gonna build one of the largest franchises in the world? Of, of course not. Your vision of success, now that you're here, you have it, you got your cars and you got your beautiful home and your is it what you think or is there some things, you know, with the success you've had, things, you know, maybe you do differently or? I've never been, I've never been lonelier in my life than I am right now. Which, as crazy as that sounds, I've never been lonelier. And when people say money can't buy happiness, it's the truth, there is so much truth in that. I, I pinch myself every day. I, I walk outside this beautiful home and my beautiful home in Florida or, or when I'm boating or playing, whatever I'm doing, I say, how did I get here, right? And why me, God? Why, what is your plan for me? But you need to have someone to share it with. You need, that. that's one part of it. And then living life with purpose. What is the, what's the rest of my life, life look like? It's, it looks like diversity. Um, I love my, my lodge in, in, in Africa in the Serengeti and, and trying to do good there, try to make a dent in anti-poaching. I could show you some of the most inhumane videos of poaching that you can imagine that literally you'll be in disbelief of, of what it is. It is a, a lot of work yet to do, for sure. Well, I mean, you have that presence to you. People, you know, you're good leaders. People will want to follow you. The more people see you doing things, the more people will follow on and then they'll do it and people will follow them. And yeah, I hope you're right. You know what? I'm a, I'm a really passionate guy. Hopefully, when people are hearing what I'm saying, I'm just hoping that they can grab little life lessons along the way. Being an entrepreneur is getting in there every day, spitting in your palms and going after it, chasing it down every day. And win or lose doesn't matter. You know, I always say if you haven't failed in business, you're not trying hard enough. Failing is part of growing. Pain is part of growing. And that's not only in business, that's in your personal life as well. And I can't stress it enough that it's, don't be afraid to fail. Liberty on the Lake is always going to be an event to raise money for causes, worthy causes. I'm going to have it right here. There's not a better place. There's not a more beautiful piece of property. Just the way, being out on this peninsula, I mean, imagine today they expect over a thousand boats on the lake. Most of these boats have between eight and ten people on them. So you're going to have ten to fifteen thousand people just on the lake alone watching this concert, let alone the 600 people here. And if we can bring awareness to causes, boy, what, what, what a great way to do it. First and foremost, it's great talent, raising money for a great cause, and then always making it available to the lake. I want the people, I want the people on the lake to have as much of a concert experience as all of our special guests do. It's my pleasure here to bring up my friend, Mr. Tim McGraw. Tim, come on up, my brother. Tim is going to play at our Twin Cities Summer Jam next year. It's the third week in July every year for the next 20 years. And, and he believes in giving back. He believes in, you know what, I'm going to live my life with purpose because he's been given a gift and he takes that gift to help other people. How do you want to live? How do you want to live this life? What's your legacy look like? Is it, is it, the, is it singing or is it the differences you make in people's lives? And how did you give people a leg up? How humble and kind were you? And that is, that is what it's about. And it doesn't matter if, if you're worth $10 billion or worth $2. So Liberty on the Lake, it's about that. It's about great talent, great concert, great musicians, raising money for unbelievable causes.
I start my day at 3 a.m. I went through school and it just wasn't positive for me. I don't recall enjoying it. And then I discovered business. Everybody at school wants gum and no one has gum. If I sold everyone gum, I could make some money. My, my whole brain works, find a problem, there's four steps. Find a problem, solve the problem, sell the solution, nail it and scale it. So when I'm like 14, 13, I'm selling gum in quantities. I'm going to Sam's in bulk. And then the, the principal calls me and says, uh, Mr. Clark to the principal's office, Mr. Clark to the principal. I'm like, what is going on? He, Sir, are, Clay, are you selling gum? I, go, I am selling gum. You said you can't sell gum. I said, okay, I'll stop. Then I found out people wanted cassette tapes. Remember Millie Vanilli, Paula Abdul? Everybody wanted, it's like, straight up, now tell me, do you really want to love me forever? And people always wanted that Millie Vanilli. Blame it on the rain that was falling. And then we had tapes, cassette tapes. So I bought a cassette. I'm like a 13 year old kid. I'm, I'm high speed dubbing tapes. Oh, you got you got the tape? I got the tape, so I give you the tape. I'm not selling drugs, but it's kind of like a drug thing, so it's illegal tape, so I'm giving you tape. $15, and I'm buying more tapes. I got this black market candy and music career going on. And then when I went to the worst event of my entire life was the Students Against Drunk Driving. The people planning Students Against Drunk Driving were drinking vodka during their water bottles and in class. So I put my hand up, I said, Miss Page, I think that that DJ was terrible. She says, well, why? I said, you can't play Cotton Eye Joe after Regulate. That's why no one's dancing. The guy's horrible. And he's like in his 50s and he's a chain smoker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, up next, uh, our next song, it's going to be an incredible hot song. It's called Regulate. <laughs> and he goes and smokes. That kid gets ridiculous. Anybody could do better. So she says, well, if you can do better, then you do it yourself. And I said, I will. So we've never had more than 300 kids attend a dance, approximately. For every student that comes after 300, can I keep the door? I'll take care of the food, I'll take care of the beverages. I just want $5 per person that comes in after 300 and all the food and beverage. She says, it's on, Mr. Clark. I go, oh, it's on. So I'm passing out flyers, and I didn't know you couldn't invite other schools to your school dance. The night of the event happened, the people show up, and there's maybe a 1,000 kids where there should be like 300 kids, and they're not from our school. And the energy is epic now. So and people are crowd surfing, and I'm making crazy amounts of money. And I'm going, I'm going to make $5,000 tonight. The crowd surfing was out of control, and the principal asked me to stop, and I said no. And I asked the crowd, do you want to stop? And they said no. I said, do you want to stop? No. Do you want to fight for your right to party? And then they, the principal kicked me out. I met Vanessa when I was going to Oral Roberts University. She was a cheerleader and I thought she was super attractive and she's super smart. And so even to this day, she'll say stuff and I'm going, oh, I should write that down. So I feel like I'm kind of married to like an attractive Yoda. And he's allowed it in his grace and goodness and mercy, right? Because he has a plan for, for good, for goodness. And so I, I get so excited about everything. She does. I, I do, that the God is doing right now. <laughs> We had our first business, DJ Connection, which was a mobile entertainment company, and we grew that to be doing 80 events a weekend. It was crazy. We ended up selling that, and we started something called Make Your Life Epic, and that's what Clay does is coaches people in their businesses and helps them grow their businesses. He sees patterns like no one I've ever met in my life. I remember he kept telling me things I needed to do, and I kept going, you don't understand my business very well. Like, you may understand other businesses, because I know you coach a lot of successful companies, but you don't understand the business we do. What I later found out is that every business owner he coaches tells him that in the first three months. After a little while, finally, things were kind of rough that I was dealing with, and I went back to him and I was like, what was that you told me to do again? Things just took off from that point. I achieved a certain level of success, and people kept asking me if I could coach them or teach them how to build a scalable business. I said yes to 160 clients. One of the greatest parts about Clay is he's not just a guy that builds your website, but he coaches you. He's the only one I've seen with the, his level of expertise. Clay and I sit at his desk one month ago, and he put together a video just for my Facebook marketing himself. And that was just his focus, is, is help, helping his clients, helping them grow their businesses. That's 100% of, of, of his locked and loaded focus. So I'm working with clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then it occurred to me that I didn't want to grow beyond that point. 
when someone says, hey, c can I pick your brain and could you teach me how to grow a company? I thought, well, what if I uh, could record a show? That way I could say, yes, I could say, I can't sit down with you personally, but I could say, you could listen to my show about how to build a workflow or my show about how to do accounting or my show about how to do branding or sales or marketing. We have the incredible opportunity to interview this celebrity chef, Mr. Wolfgang Puck. She is now on the Thrive Time Show, Gretchen Rubin. 24 year NBA coach, Paul Press. Exclusive interview with Lee Cockerell. Basketball player, David Robinson. On today's show, entrepreneur, Seth Godin. I learned at the Academy, Kings Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. All right, Thrive Nation, on today's show, we're going to be breaking down what Robert Kiyosaki has recently been talking about. Robert Kiyosaki, the best-selling author, the New York Times best-selling author and real estate investment guru, has recently been talking more and more about octa non verba. You say, what's octa non verba? Well, one, it's Latin, so don't, don't get too concerned there, but it's octa Again, this octa non verba. What it means is, what what it means is, is action. You're, you need to watch what people do, and not what they say. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Today, I'm broadcasting from Phoenix, Arizona, not Scottsdale, Arizona. They're close, but they're completely different worlds. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, definition of intelligence is: if you agree with me, you're intelligent. And so this gentleman is very intelligent. I've done this show before also, but very seldom do you find somebody who lines up on all counts. And so Mr. Clay Clark, he's a friend of a good friend, Eric, Eric Trump. But we're also talking about money, bricks, and how screwed up the world can get in a few and a half hour. So Clay Clark is a very intelligent man. And there's so many ways we could take this thing but I thought, uh, since you and Eric are close, Trump, what were you saying about what Trump can't, what Donald, who is my no. age, and I can say or cannot say? What, well, I have to, first of all, I have to honor you, sir. I want to show you what I did to one of your books here. There's all a right. guy by the name of Jeremy Thorne, who was my boss at the time. I was 19 years old, working at Faith Highway. I had a job at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And he said, have you read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? And I said, no. And uh, my father, may he rest in peace, um, he didn't know these financial principles. So I started reading all of your books and uh, really devouring your books. And I went from being an employee to self-employed, to the business owner, to the investor. And I owe a lot of that to you. And I just wanted to take a moment to tell you, thank you so much for allowing me to, to, to achieve success. And then I'll tell you all about Eric Trump. But I just want to tell you, thank you, sir, for changing my life. Well, not only that, Clay, you know, thank you, but you've become an influencer. You know, more than anything else, you've evolved into an influencer where your word has more and more power. So that's why I uh, congratulate you on becoming. Because as you know, there's a lot of fake influencers out there, too, or bad influencers. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you and I agree so much, and thanks for reading my books. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest thrill for me today. Not a thrill, but recognition is when people, young men especially, come up and say, I read your book, changed my life, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I learned at the Academy, King, King's Point in New York, octa non verba, watch what a person does, not what they say. I heard about Clay Clark and Make Your Dog Epic through a business conference, so I was working for one of Clay's clients, Score Basketball, and I went to one of Clay's business conferences and it completely changed my life. I asked him there how to get mentors in my life that were business owners, not just employees. And he completely changed my life and now he's actually one of my mentors and I, I view him as a brother. What appealed to me most was that it's one of the few things that you can make a lot of money and enjoy it. So it's one of the few things you can do as a hobby and make a lot of money. So your hobby and what makes money doesn't always coincide. So it's really awesome that I get to change the lives of dogs and make money while doing it. So it's really, that's really what appealed to me. Since our grand opening, once we started training dogs, it took about 10 weeks for us to gross $20,000 in sales. The weekly coaching call helps a lot. So when you buy a franchise, 
it already has the systems and processes in place. So that's why franchises succeed. So it's kind of like bowling with bumper rails. So even if you try, you can't mess up because the guidelines are already in place. But then when you add on the weekly coaching calls, it is awesome. Because now it's like I have a ramp and I just have to push the ball down and the franchise gets it in place. So really all you have to do is the work. And then if you do it, uh, they tell you on the coaching calls and you stay within the franchise, you have really no choice but to succeed. Yeah, so having a team that handles all of the customer scheduling has freed up so much time because now I'm not training dogs while trying to answer the phone and schedule people and take care of reschedules and scheduling first times. So it just frees up so much time so you have so much more time freedom while doing it. If I didn't have a team to handle all of the customer scheduling, my schedule would be chaotic. I mean, I'd actually probably have to hire somebody to do it for me. So I would be answering calls, trying to get a hold of people, trying to reschedule, trying to take inbound calls, trying to do outbound calls, trying to get new leads, trying to answer old leads. It would just be super chaotic. So I'm super happy we have a team to take care that takes care of all of that for us. So having a team that takes care of all the marketing for you, that takes care of all the SEO for you, that takes care of all the lead generation for you is awesome because now it's just another stressor off your plate. So they're answering the phone calls for you and they're doing all of this for you. I mean, it is awesome. So you don't have to like guess, does this ad work? Does this ad work? I'm not designing new print pieces to send out to people. They know what they do works. So they already have their marketing tool that works. So you're not like guessing and trying to reinvent the wheel. They already know what works. So it's awesome having them behind you. So if I didn't have a team helping me with turnkey marketing, search engine optimization, and lead generation, I would have to learn a lot. So I'd have to learn how to uh, make a website canonically compliant, how to uh, write the articles, how many articles, how to make a website rank, how to do a Google My Business listing, how to uh, make print pieces, how to design print pieces, what colors work, what am I allowed to do, what am I not allowed to do, where should I print those print pieces, What? where should I run ads, where should I... Um, do that should I do the dream 100 what is the dream 100 how do I create a list for the dream 100 what events should I do what events should I not do I mean there's a lot there I mean I could just go on all day because there's books about each of these subjects written and we don't have to understand any of that because they're taking care of it all for us so my, my life would be crazy if I had to learn all of that stuff What does a day in the life look like for a Make Your Dog Epic franchisee owner? Basically, you're waking up to do the hobby that you love. So you're seeing your schedule. If you have an event, you're going to an event and you're interacting with people, you're telling them about dog training, you're showing off your own personal dog, or you're going to lessons and you're teaching Fluffy how to sit, come, down, place, heal, you're doing all of it and you're helping these people through their issues. And it can literally be life changing for these people. So it's a super rewarding job um, and business to own because you're actually making a difference in somebody's life and while being paid well to do something that you love. So a day in the life, basically you're just checking your schedule and you're going through all of it, uh, whether it's lessons, whether it's managing people, whether it's doing events, but that's basically a day in the life. What I like most about owning this business is how much fun you can have while making good money. Because a lot of people don't know this, but more people are not having kids and they're getting dogs and they're spending more money on their dogs than they are their kids um, and everyone loves dogs so 50 percent of households own a dog and all of them if they could were to get their dog trained so it's really rewarding uh, thing to do so it's one of the few things where you can have a job that you love while getting paid well because your hobby and what pays well doesn't always coincide so it's really cool that you get to do that and that's probably one of the best things that you get to time freedom and financial freedom of being able to do something you love because you never really feel like you're working because you love to do it. All right, so the most challenging aspect of owning a Make Your Dog Epic franchise is at first it's learning the dog training. So, but Make Your Dog Epic does a great job of making sure that you feel very competent and that you know everything you need to know about dog training so that you can go out there and make a difference. And they have ongoing learning. So if you ever struggle with anything, you can always call the head trainer. You can learn how much you, however much you want. You can always come back and shadow as much as you want. 
So you, there's no like limit to how much you can learn or help you can get. After that though, it turns into half dog training, half human training, because you're training humans as well. I'll let you guys guess which one's harder. Uh, so it's just managing uh, the people side of it once you already know the dog side of it. And that would be what I would say is the hardest, most challenging part of Make Your Dog Epic. <laughs> Who do I believe would be a good fit for the Make Your Dog Epic franchise? I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, if you have work ethic and you love dogs, you're a great fit. So as long as you're coachable, you got work ethic, and you like to be around dogs, you'd be a great fit. If you hate dogs, probably not a good fit. If you have no work ethic and you're just trying to uh, not work and just uh, throw money at something and throw money back at you, then this probably isn't the thing for you. But if you want something that's very rewarding and also pays you well, then this is it. As long as you have that work ethic and you're coachable, then you're going to be a great fit for Make Your Dog Epic. How does owning a Make Your Dog Epic franchise help me achieve my financial goals? I mean, the goals that I used to have, they're not even goals anymore because I've surpassed them. So now it's like I have goals now that I didn't even know were possible to have those goals that were like realistic. I thought you had to uh, make it to the NBA or be a lottery winner or something like that to be able to have the goals that I have now. But, I mean, it's, it's completely changed my life, so I can't speak highly enough about it. I'm Teresa, and this is my dog, Rex. You wouldn't know it, but a few weeks ago, he would never have been sitting here like this. I found Make Your Dog Ethic because my friend had sent her dog to them and it was amazing the difference that that training made with her dog. All right, my name is Christian. Uh, I'm from Austin, Texas. Moved to Utah earlier this year. I found Make Your Dog Epic on Google and their training has been fantastic. My dog is finally able to listen to me. I'm able to have a better relationship with my dog and I would recommend um, Make Your Dog Epic for anyone who is trying to have a tighter, more um, close-knit connection with their, with their animal and their loved one. Hi, my name is Chloe and this is Louie. Um, I'm from Syracuse and we are just so grateful for Make Your Dog Epic. They were so amazing with us. I would describe the training as very personalized. Um, from the time that we had our first assessment, they were able to um, figure out what Louie needed and all of the lessons were very personalized to his personal needs. He's doing so much better um, and now everyone else can enjoy the happy dog that I have. So, so grateful for them and I would definitely recommend it to anyone. This is Nathan and Kendra Manwaring in Morgan, Utah. And this is Skye. And we had an amazing training experience. I think they did a great job with her. We would definitely recommend uh, Make your dog epic to anybody. Um, every time that people come over and they ask, they they say, "Wow, we probably should have done that." And I said, "Well, you still can." Yeah, Tyler and his crew there are great. And if when we ever get another dog, we'll be using you guys again. Uh, we are Wayne and Sue Hayes from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we went to the uh, Home and Garden show, and we met TJ there and uh, uh, Akili and we're impressed and left our name for a phone call. It's been night and day. Um, Wonderful. He, he uh, does the loose leash walking. Um, he stopped um, being aggressive toward other dogs and other people so far. So he's, it's just a pleasure to go walking with him now. And uh, he's uh, learning commands. He knows what off means. And we still um, use the use that, um, and he knows what come means. Uh, like say, he walks well, um, and he's just he's just a different dog. I would say get off the fence. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it's just been a pleasure. We tried two other dog trainers who just gave up uh, and accomplished nothing, uh, but we started seeing results. Uh, in the first week. Walking Tiberius was the number one problem for me. He would pull me, um, if you could picture a cartoon character flying behind their dog, that would be me. And um, he pulled my shoulder out of the socket last time I took him to the vet. So I really struggled with that. I dreaded ever taking him to the vet because of that. So now he's able to walk with me on the leash and not pull me. 
and that is wonderful. He wouldn't drop stuff if he got it in his mouth. He would be very resistant to putting it down. Now I can walk him and make him listen to me when I tell him not to pull. I say Make Your Dog Epic is amazing. I love the way um, our experience went with JT, you. Um, I, I feel like you're very energetic and you just make it happy. You make it feel good what we're doing. And Tiberius has come home just himself, only a better version.